Hello, I'm at the University of Birmingham uh, in the Haworth Chemistry Building in Professor uh, Rachel O'Reilly's labs. Here we do uh, polymer synthesis. Uh, and so you can see around you some of the kit that we use to do polymer synthesis. For example, in this fume hood, uh, we have what's called a Schlenk line, which is an apparatus that allows us to control the atmosphere in a reaction. For example, we can remove oxygen for reactions that aren't tolerant of oxygen or control precisely the composition of gases that are there. We also have uh, over here a photoreactor, uh, which is something we can use to initiate reactions that uh, require to be initiated by light. Uh, so for example, one type of reaction is called polymerization-induced self-assembly. Uh, during polymerization-induced self-assembly, you produce a polymer which is both hydrophobic and hydrophilic. And as it forms during the polymerization, uh, it self-organizes into nanoparticles. So as you'll see over here behind you, uh, Rob is weighing out some of the components uh, of this polymerization and just self-assembly, such as monomer initiator, and placing them in, in water in a vial. And you'll notice that before the polymerization, the vial is completely clear. Uh, he then handed it to Spiros, who is going to remove the oxygen from the reaction by bubbling with nitrogen. He'll then place it in the photoreactor to start the reaction. Once the reaction is complete, when Spiros removes it from the photoreactor, uh, the, the solution will become uh, cloudy and turbid, and this signifies the formation of nanoparticles. Uh, the Rachel O'Reilly group uses nanoparticles for various biomedical applications such as drug delivery uh, and for the encapsulation of enzymes for enzyme replacement therapy. We are here in one of our analytical labs and this is our particle sizing lab. So we have here our particles that we made earlier and in this room there's several instruments that we will use to analyse the size of the particles. Now this is really important for biomedical applications because we want to know where in the body the particles will be able to travel to, but also how they'll be excreted from the body. So over there we have Zach, he's working on one of our light scattering instruments, and these use lasers simply to tell us the size of the particles that we've made. And this is based off the fact that larger particles scatter more light than smaller particles. Uh, next to us we have our atomic force microscope, or our AFM. Uh, we have our particles on a surface in the microscope and this machine will simply analyse the height profile of that surface to show us the particles that we've made on top and we can view the size and shape and properties of those particles using this instrument. Mm -hmm. 